Why hello everybody, Spencer here, also known as Lego Dude 11, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking about a brand new movie called The Suicide Squad, not to get your pants in a jumble, it's The Suicide Squad, and that's what I'm going to be talking about today, so let's talk about it. Alrighty, so... Yes, I did say that this is the Suicide Squad because the last one from 2016 was called just was just called Suicide Squad, and you know I I, I haven't talked to anyone about it and be like, oh you said it wrong, but just when people are like, what is the movie The Suicide Squad? It's not called Suicide Squad because that was the last one, but I'm gonna be talking about this one today, and before I get into my list of notes here. I, um, I I have lots of thoughts on this movie. Um, <clears throat> first off, before I actually talk about anything, I have my Flash shirt on for this occasion. I wore my Lego Batman movie shirt yesterday, but I like this Flash shirt for this movie. I actually have on this pin that I got from, um, fr that I got from Gem City Comic Con earlier this year, or a couple, I guess last month actually, so it's a Rick pin, Rick and Morty pin, it has Rick's face on it. I, I bought that, so I'm wearing it today, but it doesn't have any relation to DC, but I'm wearing my DC Flash shirt today for this review. Um, so, yeah, just a little bit of info for the shirt I'm wearing. And then, yeah, so now I'll kick off my thoughts. So, right off the bat here, um, I'm just going to mention that this is probably my favorite DC movie. I'm not trying to be biased, and um, I'll elaborate as to why it is my favorite. And then, so yeah, it's it's one of my favorites. Shazam is right up there as well, and um, so yeah, it's one of it's one of my favorites. And I'll I'll elaborate on as to why. Now, the next thing I should mention is that this film is I almost said horribly is hard R film is is definitely a hard R film. If if you're not <clears throat> if you're an adult, check it out. Like I'm 17, but I, I've seen a lot of R films, and this was okay. Um, and don't take your eight-year-old to see this, please. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, if you're a teenager like me, like, if, if you're a hot, older teenager like me, you can sit, check it out. It's definitely worth checking out. But if you're an eight-year-old or a, a, a grown-up that's thinking about, oh, The Suicide Squad. Oh, it's a DC movie. Uh, no, don't take your eight-year-old to see it, please. Uh, it, it, I saw a video of this guy talking about it, and he's like, yeah, there's this... He went to the theater, and his... The, the guy next to him took his daughter or his eight-year-old child to see the movie and I it, it, him and in my head I'm going what why and it, it anyway just don't take your child unless you have like you see the movie and you feel the need to show your child the movie for any way but I don't think that they would like that but anyway just letting you know that it's hard R um, content but other than that, what did I think of the movie? We're going to get into my notes here. Yeah, as I said, it's my it's one of my favorites. It's just... It's great. It's written by and directed by James Gunn. And they let him use his imagination and creativity to this level's... Uh, to this film's, like, level. Um, yeah, just... I, there were words I was trying to spit out, and it did not work out right. But yeah, he, he used his own creative thoughts and put him into this film like made his own path his own story and everything and I actually wrote that down writing and plot points was amazing like I'm not trying to also I forgot to mention that I watched the week before this movie came out uh, I was on vacation last week so that's why I'm making this review a little bit later than I normally would I would record it and then I would have it a week after the movie but it's two weeks after the movie so apologies on that but I was on vacation um, so yeah, the week before this movie came out, I actually watched the 2016 one uh, in like in, in advance for like some hype, um, just to get me even more excited for this movie. Which this movie, I was on the edge of my seat the whole time, and I was um, like, again, it's not the, the 2016 one's not my favorite film, but there are some things I enjoy about it. Some of the characters just being together, and some of the dynamics and. And this and that, but yeah, it's it's not the best written movie. I would still like to see the director's cut of that film, and 
but then watching this one, I totally could see the, the different ways that James Gunn... Like, even though it wasn't the same director, I could just feel that this one was, like, more Suicide Squad-esque. And just, in the sense, I knew how James Gunn directed this. Like, I... I felt like... And there, I felt like there was more, like, of a plot transition. There are so many great transitions in this movie. I'll get back to that later. But just in the last one, it was like... They're explaining things, but... You, but... It was just like, okay, good versus evil. That's essentially what happens in this movie, but but things are escalating. Things didn't seem to escalate as much in the last one, and it just felt like, oh, look at this team. They're going to fight this bad person. Like, it, like the Enchantress. There was some bad moments, but it was just so bland. So without that, I'm not going to talk about the other one. I'm going to talk about this one now, and uh, the characters. I, I wrote down the characters because the characters were fantastic. Um, some of people, I haven't talked, again, I, I kind of said this before, I haven't really talked with many people about this movie. I've asked two of my friends um, Wednesday before the, the day the movie came out, I said, are you going to watch this movie? And they're like, no, because the last one was trash, and I really have no interest to see this. So I kept trying to tell them that this is a different actor or a different director, uh, who do, who's done phenomenal things, and they're like, yeah, just not have no interest. So, anyway, I the characters in this movie, there's like half of them. Again, this is spoilers, so you have been warned that like get killed, like half of the cast gets killed instantly, first ten minutes in the movie. And I was blown look, when I watched this uh, the day, the night before. I was just in shock. I could not believe how many characters they killed off. And one of those, like, I understand that's the Suicide Squad. James Gunn did fantastic, did it fantastically. I was just like, the one character I did not, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say a major spoiler here, like, right now. So, three, two, one. I could not believe the character they killed off was Captain Boomerang. I thought that he was gonna be, like, with them for later. But it, it, it doesn't, like... The trailers, they the trailers weren't bad, but you could tell when the trailers were happening that like okay, where is Starro and where is the final team? You could tell that there were like five people set standing there at the end, who's kind of like the end team, um, and that's not a bad thing. It's just kind of like okay, you can piece together in your head who's there and who's not, but it like you don't know what what scenes are where, but it's, it's just kind of makes sense to you, like, as you're watching the film, okay, they're not there, and they're not there, and they're not there, so, anyway, it's not a bad thing, it's just something to think about, but, who they killed off in the beginning, I couldn't believe Captain Boomerang was one of them, because I really liked him in the last one, I really liked him as a character, but overall, it was shocking, and, like, Nathan Fillion's character got killed off, he, he had some funny moments, TDK, the detachable kid, um, yeah, just, like, Mongol, I think, was my least favorite character. She just didn't do anything too interesting. Uh, Javelin was a nice touch. I liked him and, and like, his arc with the Javelin, giving it to Harley Quinn. So that was a nice little Easter er, nugget that they added throughout the film, her using the Javelin, and then to stab him, stab Starro in the eye at the end. Starro was a great plot point. It, it was more for a comedic relief purpose, but overall, in the grand scheme of things, it didn't need to be a big, bad villain. Like, it was just a funny, comedic thing. I think for the, the like, Bloodsport, um, Peacemaker, and, like, Ratcatcher, like, some of these characters were more given an arc for themselves. Starro was just like, here is a funny, comedic villain, and we're going to give it, um, like, a cartoony style the best that we can. You know, enchant like the last one, they're not really trying to compete, but I feel like the last one just was like, here's an evil, scary enchantress. But this one's like, no, let's let's do something a little bit different. With James Gunn's style that he always does, it was kind of funny. Um, yeah, the writing and the plot was much better than the last one, too. It just kind of felt well paced out. And also, it was like stretched out. Like, it was two hours. The last one was two hours. But this one just felt like very smooth paced, transitioned well. Speaking of transitions, the from each scene... The way they went to each scene was amazing. I loved how, like, the title picture, um, Savant, who play, who's played by, 
Michael Rooker, who's also Yondu in Guardians of the Galaxy, when he when his head gets blown off by Amanda Waller, again, spoilers, um, it says title, the Warner Brothers Pictures Presents All in Blood from his head, and then it just transitions to um, like three days earlier on a toilet bowl, and then like meanwhile Harley with roots, and then it says Operation Harley with the flames. Everything that James Gunn does here with the transitions are, is unbelievably spot on. Like I think it's one of my favorite parts of the movie, just the transitions. No, not really, but just, it's just gorgeous. It's just like I was in awe of like, oh my goodness, like look at that, like how they put the words like with pipes and everything and with roots and like. And then the leaves, like, as it, like, it says three days earlier, and then how it just transitions back into where they were from the ten minutes in the movie, and it says now with the leaves. Oh, my gosh. On the beach, it's just, mm, oh, chef's kiss. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I mentioned that. Blood and gore, there's a bunch of blood and gore in this film itself. Um, like I said, don't take your eight-year-old to see this movie, but anyway, so much there's not so much blood and gore, but there's like something coming at his face and you see it. Some Captain Boomerang slices his head off and you see the, the brain. So it is so much more blood and gore than in any other DC film that I can think of. Um, yeah, and then the score is fantastic. I love a bunch of the, sa the songs that they use in this movie. The, the score, whoever wrote it for the actual movie itself did a spot on job. So I love all the action uh action song, or no, not songs, like action pieces that they wrote for this, and that's all I have to say about the score, but the breakdown, or I'm reading my notes that I took, the different sections that they have in this movie, so like the beginning, like the first 10 minutes is where everybody goes all in to, for the main mission, and then like half of the cast gets killed off, and you see team one, bye bye, team two, hello, and it's like King Shark, King Shark was a hilarious, played by Sylvester Stallone, he just goes, <laughs> just, his laughter is funny, and then Rat Capture 2, I loved seeing Taika Waititi, a little cameo as the dad, and um, Idris Elba played as Bloodsport, great job, Peacemaker, John Cena, fantastic, and David, what's his face, <laughs> I forget his last name, played by po or Polka Dot Man, I love I love his character so much, and those those is like are the main group of Suicide Squad, and then we have Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn and Rick Flag, um, from the last one coming back reprising their roles. They did great. Harley Quinn just steals the show and does a great job. At Margot Robbie does a great job playing Harley Quinn, but I love all the different sections here. The first ten minutes is like their main mission, and then they go on three days earlier. See like give a backstory to who's who form the team up, and then they got all this, like, t Team 2 stuff, and then they they go backtrack, and um, and then you s they have to rescue Harley, they go on into this, they find the Thinker, who's played by K Peter Capaldi, who I love playing as the Doctor from Doctor Who, is the 12th Doctor, and um, he does great acting inside of this film, but, yeah, overall, then they find the Thinker, and that scene is great. And then they find the Thinker, team up with him, find out he's behind Project Starfish. He kind of turns on them, then he dies by Project Starfish, and by Stardo himself, and then, yeah, I'm not going to break it all down, but then, like, there's this fight scene by Rick Flag and Peacemaker, and then the big battle happens at the end, and so many, so many things happen. There are, like, moments where I'm like, what, what the heck happened here? And then there's two end credit scenes, so if you're if you're um, interested to check out, don't have to sit through the credits. I just fast forwarded it through the credits. But if you've seen this in the theater, it's a great experience. But there's two end credit scenes, and worthwhile checking out. And uh, yeah, I, I just couldn't believe my eyes. I think this is so much better than the last one. And some people are either gonna love it or gonna hate it. I loved it. There's a lot of comedy in it. There's a lot of hardcore stuff in it. And you know. It's, it's, for me, it's up there. Like, I thought it was a great DC film. I'm not trying to be biased here. But, in the grand scheme of things, either you're going to love it or hate it. And, you know, that's just like anything. But, like, there's some things that are really good, and this is kind of bad. I don't think it's bad. But some people look at it and go, 
okay, what did I just watch? And some people might go, yeah, that was great. G great film, great art, you know. I look at it as art. James Gunn does really well with his films, but uh, I'm just sitting, I'm sitting looking at it going, you know, I think it's a great movie. But some people might not like that as hard R content, you know, all this stuff, but I could talk about it all, uh, all day. There's no Joker in it. Harley Quinn gets into a little new uh, love interest here and there. And uh, Rick Flags, like the, the other group of like the tribe characters is kind of unique as well. I love so many things about this movie. I could talk about it all day. There's, you know, Polka Dot Man seeing his mom and the, the Polka Dot Man's arc with, with, um, with seeing his mom, like getting, like he, how he was created in Star Labs and then just seeing his mom as everybody that was hilarious. Rat Catcher at the end, um, got a little arc with all the rats coming out and defeating Starro and then John, uh, not John Cena, Idris Elba, Bloodsport, got a little redemptive arc at the end where he's petting the rat Sebastian and Sebastian was very cute as well. Um, those are kind of all the things I wanted to talk about. I don't want to make this too terribly long, but those are all my thoughts on the Suicide Squad movie that came out in August of 2021. Um, if you did enjoy this review, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel down below at LegoDude11. Be sure to follow me over at Boba Fett Master on Instagram. Link is down below as well. Stay tuned for more reviews coming later. Uh, my Rick and Morty Season 5 review will come out when in September, a um, little later because they're going on hiatus. So um, stay tuned for that review when that comes out. I do plan to make a Bad Batch review coming out in l tomorrow and um, coming out tomorrow, so stay tuned for my Bad Batch review of all 16 episodes of The Bad Batch. We talk about full season and as well as my vacation my vacation video. So I'll be discussing what happened uh, at my when I'm on my trip. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more videos to come, more reviews and all of this stuff. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and follow me. I'll catch you guys in the next review and other videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me. Don't forget to keep calm. Play Lego. Bye, everyone.